The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look here at this uh, German DAX, the FTSE. You can see they're all moving higher. At least they were earlier, but they're having a sell-off today like we've had a tiny bit here in stocks. Given the jobs report, you know, remains to be seen. But we'll look at these as we go through. The one thing I do want to show you here, folks, is the uh, German Bund. Uh, you'll notice here this is the long-term weekly on the German Bund. And we'll get this up here again uh, to take a look at it. Also, um, regarding the open interest in the uh, Treasury notes and Treasury bonds, yes, again, the Treasury notes and Treasury bonds showed a drop in open interest again on Friday. I don't know when this thing's going to stop. It might be today. It might be never. But um, that's neither here nor there. So we'll take a quick look at it as we look. All right, we're going to do something different this morning, folks. We're going to go back to the history books and just see what's happened to some of these markets over the years and how we got to this point and how I started trading it. I think the best place to start is probably you've always heard the story about the college stuff and the silver and all that. I know you've heard that, but uh, let's just go into the uh, late 1960s, 68, 69, 70. Uh, I was in uh, Westlake Village, California, working for Eli Lilly, and I had a uh, really, really great job. And um, every morning I would go in. I was working at UCLA, was across the street from the McCulloch Oil Building when the 20th floor was the um, – offices for um, um, uh, Conti Commodities run by Roy Fassel, Rick, Rick Barnes, Ricky the Rocket Barnes was uh, one of the brokers in there. Tornyman was a, a broker there. They had come over across the street from the Howard Hughes building where Clayton Commodity had an office. Uh, it was taken over by Conti and um, made it easy. Remember, folks, back in those days, we didn't have <laughs> no computers, of course, but we didn't even have charts. Uh, you got your charts once a week. If you wanted an intraday chart, the only way you could get it was off an ADP, Automatic Data Processing Machine, and it cost $5 to get a five-minute chart over the last hour. And um, we didn't have any of that. All we had was a Bunko Ramo board, one of these really large boards that covered the wall. And um, they had red and green flashing lights, and it made clickety, clickety sounds all the time. One of my good buddies, uh, uh, Dennis uh, uh, O'Shaughnessy in Chicago, who's uh, he's a third-generation uh, corn trader. He has that board in his den in Chicago. Live board. You just click it on, and it works like the old days. It's it's. I want to get a picture. I will. It's really a cool thing to have uh, for that. Anyway, that's uh, basically uh, what we were what we were looking at. Well, I. My, my, one of my big turning points was 1970 because uh, the book, The Profit Magic of Stock Transaction Timing, had come out, and it was uh, written by James Hurst. Uh, Hurst would later in 1977 become one of my accounts at Drexel Burnham. Very nice man. He was an engineer uh, at, I believe, I believe it was Aeronautics. I think that's where he was, and but he was uh, very, very quiet. Did actually didn't like trading. I think he did three trades with me and two years or three years or something like that. And then when retirement came, he moved up to Grass Valley in Nevada City. That's up in the Sierra Nevada Mountains, not too far from the um, um, on the other side of Lake Tahoe on the California side. But um, he lived there for quite a while. And uh, let's get back to 1970. So he, they, they, they came out with this, um, this book, The Profit Magic of Stock Transaction Timing. And um, at the same time that book came out, another book came out called The Torque Analysis of Stock Market Cycles by William Garrett. Now, Garrett was also an engineer. He was living in Hawaii. The both, both books were, public, but were, were published by the, same, uh, by the same company, and I believe I have – if I can remember what the name of it was. I think it was Macmillan. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, – the problem was the the Hearst book was a bestseller because it only cost eight ninety five, and the the uh, book with uh, and much easier to read than the book that was written by uh, Garrett because it cost twenty nine ninety five. 
So there was a big difference in price there. Anyway, uh, a guy named Ray Frechette took uh, Mr. Uh, Hurst uh, by the wing, and Frechette was a promoter and a very, very good one, folks. He came out with this uh, charting service called Cyclotech. And basically what it does, it gave you the cycle lows forecasted for the next week. It came by special delivery, 11 by 14 charts. The only way you got your commodity charts, folks, was by special delivery from CRB, the Commodity Research Bureau charts. You'd get those on Saturday morning also. And then in 1970, they started this Cyclotech thing, and they would look for cycle lows. And that's what they were trying to do. Let me just show you. I, I pulled one of these things. I have a little... Um, uh, a little article that was written in uh, commodity stocks and commodities magazines oh seven eight years well nine years ago and it talked a little bit about that if you want to have a copy of this a little article uh, it's about eight or nine ten pages I'll send it to you just drop me an email send me a check for a thousand dollars and we'll call it square all right let's take a look here at the um, Next thing that we're watching here, this is this is what the cyclotex look like. This is uh, you'll notice you see where those little diamonds are down there, where it says the 80-day expected trough expected, and you see how they they line up and stuff like that. That's what they were doing. They were looking at these cycle lows. Well, the thing that uh, Hurst worked on was a thing. He had uh, eight rules that he that he uh, that he talked about. Some of them actually during the time that that he brought out the stuff. It was works for stocks and commodities, but uh, when, during the time that he brought it out, during the 70s through 73, 74, the darn thing worked perfectly. But boy, after that, it really changed. I mean, it was you know a lot of things happened during the crash of 1974. Let's take a look here at some of these rules that they had with these things. Now, these were the eight rules that Trehurst had. Commonality means these, these cycles are common to everything. Cyclicity, price movements exist on a combination of specific ways and exhibit cycle characteristics. Yes, summation. This is summation that these waves co combined at the same time. That was that chart I showed you where they're looking at the nesting of lows and stuff. Uh, that trouble is that doesn't happen very often. Harmonicity, we already know what that is. Is we look at harmony in the markets at all all times. Synchronicity, we look at that all the time. We see that stuff going. Pro proportionality, that's basically what the um, harmonic numbers are and what the ratios of the Fibonacci numbers are. There was no ratio related to Fibonacci in any of his book. I mean, there was nothing related to it. There was a great deal in the book for William Garrett, but not this book. And then nominality is that there's a nominal cycle, and that's true. That nominal cycle is usually 16 to 18 days, but they only work one or two cycles, and then they shift back and forth. And the last one, variation, the, the four principles uh, represent the strongest uh, tendencies from which variation is to be expected. I never could figure out what that one meant, but uh, that's pretty much what it was. We kept it pretty simple. We watched for we watched for eight days lows, 10 days low. Let's give you an idea of um, what I was looking at when I was watching some of these things here. Here's a perfect example of, uh, just give me the right one up here and we'll take a look at it. Here is a chart for Intel. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. This is, all right, we'll be right back. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I'm talking about the Hearst book and uh, how it affected my trading and stuff. And I would look for these nominal cycles to come in every 16 to 18 days. Now, remember, I was doing commodities and um, that worked very well with commodities from 1970 all the way through 1973. And then these shike cycles started to shift and disappear and uh, really get very, very difficult. But uh, the money management stuff, if you'd have used it, still worked. And normal common sense still worked. But uh, the signal that we used to get in with the her stuff was a thing called the, uh, the breaking of a valid trend line. A valid trend line was a line drawn from a top to a bottom that connected various spots, and they were valid if they hit the Fibonacci numbers. I found this out later, but that's what—that's how I entered the market, and it was, you know, really simple in those days, folks, because we were in the midst of the the Russian grain robbery that, you know, started in 1972. It started long before that, but prices had been going up, and I I didn't know much about so I didn't know much about selling short. You know, I, I just knew how to buy, and that's pretty much what I was trying to do. So if we take a look at the uh, if we take a look at this uh, chart here, you'll notice that uh, I'm going to show you the valid trend lines. You'll be able to see that, yeah, that natural gas is moving, folks. We thought that it would be, thanks to Mr. Z bringing us to our attention again. Thanks there, Mr. Z, that uh, 225 buy in that natural gas looks like a good one right now. So let's see what's going here. Um, anyway, you'll notice the cycle bottoms there. Those are the nominal cycles, 61, 122, and those are the valid trend lines. And they're very, you know, I just draw these to show you what the concept was like. That's really you know what I'm trying to do and as you can see here those that cycle worked actually for four times which was actually pretty good usually it only works for one or two times and then it shifts it still works that way we see that happening you know all the time so uh, that's uh, that's what this was all about now there was one really good thing about the Hearst stuff. And remember, it only lasted about four or five years, and then it was gone. I mean, it just uh, it just disappeared. So did Ray Frechette with a lot of people's money. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on to the next one that I wanted to bring to your attention, which was, I think, the most important thing that uh, Hearst talked about. And, and believe me, folks, at this meeting that they had, up in San Francisco at the Sta uh, Stanford, the Stanford Hotel, Stanford Inn at the Stanford Hotel, I think it was. There were, uh, oh my gosh, there were 150 people in there. That's where I met John Hill. Larry Williams was there. Peter Lighty's was there. Jake Bernstein was there. 
Oh my gosh, there were so many people. It was just unbelievable that uh, that were there all all the time. Uh, Richard Mogi from the Foundation for the Study of Cycles was there. Uh, everybody was there. I mean, uh, it was uh, Gertrude Shirk. I mean, there was a there was a whole bunch of people right there. But in this in this book, the one thing that Hearst talked about was a concept called high translation. And basically what this is, is I'll bring it up and I'll show you. I'm using Intel as an example. Now, you, you notice the 34-day nominal cycle there. You'll notice that when you go up, you crest on the right side of the, of the crest. That's a, bullish, that's a bullish one. You notice the next one crests right in the middle. That's a bullish one. Look at the, one of the high translation to the left. You see that one up the top there? the very high one, that's high translation from the left. It goes all the way from the top all the way down to the bottom. Of course, the cycle has shifted, but by that time, you've already lost most of your money. That's how I lost my money, folks. I would see high translation to the left, but I didn't know what that what that was. So all I was doing, I figured there would be a, a another bottom coming in here in about eight or nine days, and I would buy it. It rallies for three or four days. Boom, down for 10 days. Rallies for three or four days. Boom, down for eight or nine days. After about seven, eight weeks of that, <laughs> man, they hung me out to dry big time. Best trade ever made, though. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you why. Because when I got finished with it all, I really respected the Gartley book and studied it, and it made me much, much better. Uh, the money wasn't that important. Uh, well, you know, you know, I, 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 <laughs> I made a lot of money, folks, but I spent a lot of money too, and uh, fortunately, I, it, my trading capital was dissipated. I had a debit at uh, back in October of uh, 1974. I had a debit with Conti of $2,700, and uh, I, uh, uh, back in those days, we didn't have the CFTC. That didn't come in until 1975. And uh, the NFA didn't come in till much much later than that, into the uh, 80s, I believe, uh, sometime. But uh, you could trade off a debit balance based on the firm you were trading with. And since I had done so much commission business with them, they allowed me to trade. I didn't trade for a few weeks, and then I found a, a really nice cycle bottom in what I thought was pork bellies. It was pork bellies. It was a bottom. And I got it right, and I immediately made uh, my uh, $2,700 plus a few hundred dollars. I closed the account. I left a few hundred dollars in there. I just didn't trade it. And I didn't trade for uh, a year. And all I did during that year was study the book of H.M. Uh, uh, Gartley and those patterns and start to understand, you know, what the heck was I did wrong. And I went to see my old buddy, Dr. Knoblet, and he laughed at me. He said, if you think you're the only person who ever did this, he said, you're sadly mistaken. He said, get back on your horse, see what you did wrong, and start all over. And that's frankly what I did. Now, what I want to do is to show you the difference between what's happening in the uh, with the Hearst book as opposed to what happened with the book by uh, – uh, James Hurst. Okay, that was. A, I'm going to make sure I don't miss anything here that I want to talk. Oh, this is a couple charts here I wanted to show you from Hurst book. Uh, no, no, that's not the one. Hurst book. The, the other charts that I'm going to show you are from the um, the book by H.M. Um, uh, by William Garrett because I think that's the one that would really be uh, very very interesting. He looked at cycle theory. Uh, a little bit differently, and that's the whole key to what we're watching here. Here's what, here's an example of some of the things. Now, both of these guys were engineers, and uh, you know they were. Hold on just a second. We can see this. You can see this shows you the different types of cycles and how the market thrusts. You know that's really what he's trying to show you here on those those uh, four different cycles that are there, and sometimes they're ha well they are happening all at the same time. So that's what you're that's what you're trying to uh, to trying to do is to find you know some of these things. Now uh, Hurst um, he 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 passed away not about a few years ago. Uh, he was almost 90, I believe. He was still up there uh, fishing for trout up in that area. Uh, in 1994, uh, Jim uh, Ed Dobson asked me to contact Hurst. I did, and Ed Dobson put a course together for $600, giving all of the stuff that. Uh, Hearst had studied on into a uh, big course with all kinds of charts and videos and uh, tapes and stuff, and uh, that went pretty well for a while. But the cycle theory was good. The problem is it shifts back and forth like everything else, and but it did work pretty good. But when we finish the next this next segment, I want to talk a little bit about um, William Garrett because this guy was a flat-out pioneer. 
I mean, this guy was so far ahead of everybody else. I mean, these books came out at the same time. McGraw-Hill was the publisher of those books. Uh, uh, Garrett's book, The Profit uh, the Torque Analysis Stock Market Cycles, they only sold 200 books at $29.95. Uh, I'll, I'll explain to you. I, I contacted Clarice Garrett many years later. Uh, well, 1990 is when I contacted her. But um, and I'll tell you the story behind it and things. But uh, that's the real that's the real skinny about what this is about. And Garrett's book was filled with sacred geometry and the Fibonacci levels. That's the book that was the really good book. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, Mr. Bill's asking, how do we spell Garrett's name? You got it right. It's G-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, I believe. Uh, let me see. Shut the front door. Got this book. It's one of the few books I keep right on my... Uh, my desk here, and it's two T's. William C. Garrett. That's uh, that's it. Let me show you this next chart, folks. This is an interesting one, and the story behind it is really quite funny. So I'll get this up here to uh, let you take a look at it. Here, I hope we get this right. Uh, okay, this is uh, one of the book, one of the charts that he has in his book, and I wanted to uh, 
to show you this uh, particular one here. Folks, if you want this Garrett book, I bought the rights from this to, from Mrs. Garrett many years ago back in 90, 1990. I'll tell you the story in a minute, but I have that book on PDF file. If you'll donate $25 to the uh, uh, the, the gospel mission for, for socks and stuff, I'll be happy to send it on to you. If you haven't got the money, just tell me that. Anyway, uh, look at this chart here. You see this chart here where it says Fibonacci result for movement of the axis of a circle? Okay, this was in one of the one of the pages of the book. And years ago, and I, and I still do it, when I have a good win at poker or, you know, playing the horses or something, you know, a few hundred bucks, I'll put 100 or $200 into, the, into a page of the book. Uh, of my favorite books, not just uh, this one. I don't know why I had $100 in this one. But anyway, I was going through that book, and $100 popped out. And I looked at that page. I said, well, that's pretty cool. And so I, I, uh, I made a copy, and then I, I sent the old thermal fax over to Australia to Bryce Gilmore. And about 1 o'clock in the morning, um, California time, I got a call, and it was the old cowboy himself. And he said, where did you get this chart? And I said, uh, oh, I said, that comes out of a book called uh, uh, Torque Analysis of Stock Market Cycles by William Garrett. And he says, my God, he says, I got to have that book. He said, you just solved this problem that I've been trying to solve for three years. And I said, what's that? He said, how to square a circle. And I says, well, it's over my pay grade. I said, but what do you mean? He said, you see the number up at the top that says 0.118? He said, that's the secret to squaring a circle. And I said, well, that's really great. And he said, I got to have that book. And I said, well, I said, I have a copy of it. I said, I'll go, I'll go down tomorrow and I'll copy it and I'll get it out to you. Just, you know, I'll send it uh, express. You'll have it in a couple of days. He said, I want it today. I says, Bryce, it's one o'clock in the morning. He says, have I ever asked you for anything? I said, nope. I said, okay. So I got up. The only place you had open at that time, back in 19, uh, that was 1990, uh, was to go to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo to their printing department because they had a video stuff all available for you, so you could copy everything that you wanted. And uh, so I went there and I copied the whole book, uh, 300 pages, and then I had to send them to him by fax at 25 cents a page. And <laughs> well, no, it was more than that. I don't remember what it was. Anyway, he got the book and he read it all. And about, oh, must have been 13, 14 hours later, he said, uh, do you know if this woman's still alive? And I said, uh, or if he's still alive. And I said, I don't think that he is because he was quite old at the time. Uh, this was, you know, he wrote that book in 70, 1970s, and here we are 20 years later. And I called uh, Hawaii, and I, I saw a Clarice Garrett living in the penthouses on Ala Moana Boulevard, and I didn't know if it was her or not. I called her up. She answered the phone, and it was her. It was her and her husband had uh, been in Iowa. They retired in Hawaii where he was a broker for Walston and Company. He had one account. It was his own account. It was money uh, left to him by the by the family farm and stuff, and he basically bought and sold bonds to give him as much interest as he could possibly do, you know, get as much interest that he could possibly get uh, from this stuff. But that's uh, that's the real reason for uh, why we were, uh, you know, how I got interested in this. And so I, I said to her, I said, would you like to uh, – uh, can can you tell me something about, you know, your husband? I said, wh wh what did he read and everything? She said, oh, she, he had wonderful books. She said, they're really big on Egypt stuff. She said, she had a lot of books from Egypt. And he said, when he passed away, he said, I gave everything to the University of Hawaii library for them. And she said, the problem was the uh, all the books were stolen. She said, all the, they didn't last more than just a few weeks. All the books were gone. And I said, oh, boy. So anyway, I, I said, I, I'll call you back. I'll probably have some more questions. And then uh, Bryce, I said, I talked to her. And Bryce said, uh, well, you know what we got to do is we've got to talk to this woman. She said, I'm on my way to see you in California. By golly, he came out. We called her, and we, we flew her to California. She was going to visit her brother up in Fresno, and she spent the day with us. And uh, she told us about the book, how many they had sold, the fact that they, she had a substantial uh, retirement income from the farm and the bonds and stuff like that. But he didn't like trading, uh, much like W. D. Gann. He smoked a lot, uh, but he really studied uh, Egyptian uh, philosophy and things like that. It was the one thing that he really did. But he didn't trade very much at all. 
is what she said. And then I offered her, to, I wanted to buy the book. She wanted to give it to me. And I said, no, can't do that. So I paid her five grand for the rights to the book and uh, didn't do anything with it. Um, I really, uh, I really didn't. I, I think. Wait a minute. Wait, we did. Yeah, Ed, Ed Dobson uh, reprinted it uh, at one time, and I don't know what they're doing here uh, at that spot. Anyway, that's uh, that's what happened. So the 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 main thing, the the reason why that the squaring of that circle was so important, and I'll just show you the next the next chart that really describes what cycle theory is about, folks. Boy, oh boy, this is really frustrating. I gotta, hold on a second here. Uh, one second here, let's get this up here and you'll be able to see this one here. There you go. This is the page 89 on the book here. This really describes the cycle theory the way it really should be described because you see, uh, when you're looking at a chart, you see the square that's there at the bottom there and you see how the square expands to a circle. The circle expands to an ellipse all the way through this. It goes from 618 to 1.618, 2.618 to pi. I mean, that's the stuff of what cycles are made of, folks. And remember, these planets that we deal with, they run in elliptical orbits like this. So that's why that probably makes a uh, big deal. By the way, uh, of those of you that follow Mr. Winsky, he, he reported over the weekend that it was his strongest uh, spot to do anything for the month was Monday morning. Uh, that's today. I don't know if it's going to be the top in the market or not, but, uh, you know, he does get lucky once in a while, a whole lot more than most of us do. So let's pay attention to see if that's going to be the case. We'll have him on probably before we have the next, uh, uh, lunar, we have a lunar eclipse due on the 16th, so we'll probably have him on somewhere around the 15th. So that's what happened with, with the Hearst book. Um, uh, and, you know, that's really what it's all about. Uh, and I can, you know, that's basically the, my study of cycles and stuff and all the stuff that I did. You know, it's pretty much uh, pretty much the way that it went. So I hope that helps you a little bit. Anyway, we'll talk about some of these markets. Uh, we, we're, we should be over a low in the euro today, folks, but we're down at the 78 percent level. We're at death's door on the euro as we speak right now. So if we don't... Uh, you know, we're due today is the, if we take a look at this euro, we'll bring this up. Oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Here's the euro right here. You'll see here, there's a little bit of the cycle theory. You see from the high to the low, seven trading days down, high to the low, seven trading down. That's today. We're setting right at the 78% level right now at 112.30. So it's got to hold this level or we're going lower. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and I, I wanted to uh, uh, remind you, folks, that uh, the... Uh, oh, dear... This is the last day of the week. That's not what I wanted. What I wanted. Oh, here's what I. I'll be on um, this coming week. I'm going to be on every day for two hours. I'll be doing three to four p.m. Uh, on two of the days and four to five p.m. Uh, on on the from the tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. I'm going to do three to four p.m. And then on Tuesday, I'll do uh, 3 to 4 p.m. And the rest of the time, I'll be on my regular stories. And then the, late in the afternoon, finishing up for Tom's uh, stuff that uh, uh, that we'll be looking at. So we'll be able to see if it uh, if it works okay doing those two hours. But I think we'll have a lot of fun. I'm gonna try to do some different things and share some old stories because you get tired of looking at these patterns. I I know you do, but uh, sometimes they work. You know, sometimes they don't. Uh, that's neither here nor there. So let's move on here. I still want to spend a second here with Bitcoin to show you where we are with the Bitcoin. It's really rocking and rolling, folks, even though uh, it's pretty difficult for a normal human being to trade. But we hit the 61% retracement up there near 14,000. We dropped a quick 40% or 38%. Uh, down to right at 9,800, then we're back to 11,000 again. So this thing's really moving. If we get back below that 9,800 again, we could easily go back to 7,000. But right now, you know, I uh, don't, I don't really look at that. I know they've got a couple of ETFs that follow what Bitcoin does, but frankly, I, I just don't have any interest in it. With all the stuff that's going on in some of these other markets, it's really not been too much of an interest in me. We're at pretty pretty major support now here in the E-mini S&P, folks, as we, uh, whoop, we're just breaking it right now. We just broke through it at, at 2883, uh, uh, was some pretty good support there. That's where those old highs were, where we broke out to, to the upside. The fact that we're starting to go through that is not a very good sign, you know, from, from looking at it that way. So let's, uh, you know, we might get a correction here of two days in the stock market. Who knows? So we'll do one thing at a time. The gold markets uh, had one rocking and rolling time in the gold, folks. We made a double top up there, of course, uh, at that 440 level. Uh, last night, uh, we got as high as uh, 428. Uh, we're now right down. We're actually below the 78% level, and uh, we'll see where it happened. Is Yeah, we're below the 78% level that came in at uh, 1397. That tells us that most probably we're heading down to that 1380 level, which is the level that we're looking at for a potential buy. Uh, that would be very interesting to pay attention to, but not today, not with this big move down. When you drop, when you drop 25 bucks that fast, there's a lot of selling in there, and it takes a lot of time to dissipate that. So you don't want to do it on a day like today. You have to wait till tomorrow. Uh, try not to catch that old falling knife syndrome. That's uh, 
That's the main thing. Uh, someone's asked a question about the Treasury notes and Treasury bonds, folks. <laughs> I'm the only, you know, you don't want to, I'm the old hourglass in the old room. I mean, I'm the only one that says this whole stuff is baloney because I do not believe in negative interest rates. I know we're seeing them in some places, but it doesn't make any sense to me. And uh, I have not met anyone yet that explains to me in a, in a, in a reasonable way that uh, someone could understand it, that it works. I, I just don't understand that. It just doesn't make any, uh, doesn't make any sense to me at all. That's, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. So let's uh, remember that because I have to give you my two cents worth. And the reason why I say that is, folks, this thing has been going up on negative, int on, on negative open interest for well over two and a half weeks. And that means buyers are leaving. And with the market doing what it's doing today with good news, that's a bad sign, you know. So whether that means anything or not, you know, I don't know, but nobody else does either. So I'm just looking at the charts. So that's it. We'll see uh, how the thing moves a little bit. Not too much going on here but to look at. The corn markets had a pretty good rally here the last day or two. We rallied all the way up to uh, uh, 440. Off we are out rallied 20 cents. We're down about four cents this morning. So I would be watching to buy corn on a little bit of a pullback. I think that 420 is probably going to be the low for the year. Uh, the way it looks like, uh, the crop is still uh, way, way behind. Uh, soybeans are acting, you know, relatively well. So we'll see. Uh, the crude oil is due for a bounce today. We're having a pretty good bounce so far this morning. But remember, crude oil has an overall negative bias because of that 618 level that we hit up there at that 6023. That was a really important number. And we uh, we brought that to your attention uh, several different times last week uh, and also in the newsletter to do that. The natural gas, we love that natural gas. Uh, you know, that's the one that uh, we brought to us by Mr. Z. You have to give him, uh, you know, a lot of credit because he points out these things to us. And as you can see here, this was, uh, the fact is we did this on Monday's show. As a matter of fact, we did talk about it. And then we also posted the chart showing the 420 or the 225 level of how, uh, how important that was. I don't even know where it's trading today, but, uh, it's uh, and it's not lower because the beeper hasn't gone off to tell me that, but it looks like it's. Uh, can, uh, could you give me the last price of the natural gas, please? I'd like to. I I can't get the price and pull up the from the newsletter or from the uh, radio show at the same time because it'll it'll disconnect the uh, the data feed and I don't want to I don't want to go through uh, the data feed for sure. Uh, I guess no one knows what natural gas is doing. Oh wow, two thirty nine. That's really good. That's that's really moving now. That's up about nine cents. That's a, that's a pretty good handle. That's up 900 bucks. Okay, thank you, Tucker. Thank you, Marshall. Appreciate it. Uh, the um, uh, someone someone asked me a question. Was that the top in the stock market? I don't know. All I know is, remember back in 1932, the market bottomed on July the 8th, as I recall, might have been the fifth at 32.32 in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It went from 383 on September the 3rd of 1929, and three years later, in July, it was either the 5th or the 8th, I never do get it right, at uh, 42, 42 was the price of the uh, the Dow Jones. So that's what we're watching. It was pretty, uh, pretty, pretty rough. Yep, Ruby said that they would go, and what Ruby says, the market does, that's for sure. The coffee's still rocking and rolling, really. You're going to get a chance to uh, buy that a little bit. We're down three days now, so we should get a little bit of a pop here to see if it's going to uh, get that move uh, moving. So we want to watch that uh, very, very closely for sure. The gold's still weakening here. We did hold that support in the S&P, folks. That support was at 20, uh, 29.28. We got down as low as, uh, did we break? No, I think we got low as 80, wasn't it? Yeah. Stopped 22, 29, 79, 29. So watch this uh, very, very closely here because that's really key support. That's those old highs that was back there. That's the main thing. But remember, the U.S. dollar is rocking and rolling, folks. The euro is now way below the 78% level with a big, wide-ranging bar to the downside. Uh, and the bonds are, you know, getting whacked. So crude oil is rocking and rolling to the upside. So... As they say in the trade, we've got game. Let's pay attention to this because there's going to be some monster moves happening today. And uh, most probably over the weekend, there'll be some type of a big announcement that says, oh, that's why that happened on Friday. So who knows? 
Anyway, watch for a little uh, little rally here in the S&P, folks. Let me just give you my two cents worth, and that's exactly what it's worth. But if we do get a rally here in the S&P, uh, say you rally up to, well, maybe uh, 29.89, I would be a seller there. I actually would. Just as a wild guess, using the old roulette wheel with the old crystal ball. And uh, that's uh, neither here nor there. But keep an eye on that number of 29.89. 877-927-6648. Billy Ray Valentine for TFNN. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, I want to take a second to talk to you about trading because, you know, trading is simple, but it's not easy. Those are the words of Mark Douglas. You know, you're not going to get this overnight. No one ever does. It takes years. There's no schools to learn this stuff. You have to dig it out yourself. And that's, uh, you, unfortunately, that's just, the way it, that's just the way it goes. But if you stick with it, you will get it right. That's the whole key is to stick with it. That's the don't ever give up. Uh, pattern recognition is just one way of looking at the markets. There's a whole lot of other ways of looking at it, but that's just what we're really taking a look at. See, anyway, uh, what I wanted you to do is I wanted to show you a chart that we got from one of our uh, folks over in Hong Kong that uh, trades the Hang Seng Index, and he was bringing this to his uh, – you don't have to worry about that boat, folks uh, – Anyway, let's. Uh, you can see the chart on the insert there. That's the one that we sent out on the newsletter each week, the Hang Seng Daily Index chart, 
we had that uh, island reversal pattern, and he pointed it out over here. And then we also, on the right there, you noticed he had an island reversal pattern on the weekly charts, too. So that's uh, it's really uh, interesting how well these things worked uh, for this gentleman. And it's basically just one pattern where you have a, an island reversal. In other words, all the prices, and all of a sudden it gaps up and takes off uh, out of the out of nowhere. And uh, that's a very, very powerful pattern when you have it. We don't see those very often, but when we do, that's uh, pretty much uh, what we're looking at. So this is that was went to back to November 22nd of last year, folks. That's what that was. So remember, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you don't lose. And that's it. Yes, Marshall, there's a really nice head and shoulders back pattern in that natural gas that we pointed out uh, that came in at the 225 level and we're now uh, what $1,400 ahead of that by the way if you, you know remember we bought that silver last week the Christmas silver we you know it went up to $2,000 profit whether you got out or not I don't know but it certainly you had your stop at break even if nothing else but we're going to have a good chance to buy the gold I believe this week because we had that double top up here at 1441 hit it twice within a dollar or two so we get down about 70 bucks from those highs around 1370 it's going to be really interesting so live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless Thank you.